first of all, hello to everyone. I'm Clemens von Wiedemeyer and I invited Benjamin Meyer Kramer, my colleague at the school in Leipzig, um, to speak together as we both have uh, slightly different perspectives that overlap. Hello to everyone and thank you for listening to this program. I'm trying to picture some sort of audience, which is a weird situation, sitting at home at my desk. But I do hope that at one point in the not so far future, we will be able to actually have a conversation about the topics raised by the initiators of this conference, for which I'm very grateful. Thank you, Clemens, for the invitation to have this slightly virtual dialogue under the conditions of a semi-lockdown over here in Berlin. first thing I would have to stress is that um, when we ask what teaching and learning at an art school should be like, I would have to be a student. I have studied at two art schools and now I'm a professor at the same school where I've studied. Nearly 20 years ago I was looking for a way out of the institution as a student, taking advantage of the opportunities it offered me studying within. My degree at the university was also a liberation from an education that was repeatedly, perhaps even constantly, criticized. What I suppressed or was not interested in back then, as a student, was how this institution functioned. But what it does not or could not offer strikes me back today as a teacher. What drove me back then was to leave the institution in order to move forward as a young artist or filmmaker. Now that I'm a teacher here, I'm trying for the first time to walk in, understand and change it, perhaps. But then as now, the only way to get in or out of this institution is, I think, to have a leg to stand on somewhere else as well. What I would like to stress also after this beginning is that we have to see the institution from the student's perspective. How talented or capable the individual person is, is a completely different question. The central question is how the work of these individual students is supported, cared for and helped by a group that includes fellow students and teachers, professors, and also the interested public. Benjamin, I invited you to talk also because you have a multiple perspective. As you suggested, I'll start by sketching my perspective on the Art Academy. I studied in the field of humanities at several universities and did my PhD in comparative literature. After that, I moved on to working in the gallery and co-founded an agency for exhibition design, did some curating, worked together with the artist Willem de Roy for several years and finally ended up at the Academy of Fine Arts Leipzig about nine years ago. I started at the Academy as a research assistant and lecturer in the MA program Cultures of the Curatorial, which I have been running with Beatrice von Bismarck for the past years. I was appointed as professor three years ago at the Academy, where I also teach theory seminars for the students of all the art departments. Due to the privilege of not having introduced a BA MA system, our art students graduate with a diploma instead of doing an MA. This provides much more freedom in terms of curriculum, teaching formats and evaluation. Since on top of that we are also getting rid of grading altogether, the academy sometimes feels like a space in which some of the current dynamics related to evaluation, credits and numbers are less influential than in the outside world. It remains to be seen and critically discussed what the actual effects of this situation will be. Besides teaching in the only MA program at the Academy, which is the Curatorial Studies program, and in the Theory Department, I also serve as one of the two Vice Deans of the Academy. So my perspective is shaped by those different jobs I do at the Academy and the different functions I perform, which actually requires switching between different points of view. In case this sounds like a smooth shifting back and forth, I would like to stress that this is not the case 
as those different perspectives do not correspond and sometimes even contradict each other. What has been maybe the most crucial experience of those past years is the growing sense of the complexity of what we casually call a public institution and my involvement in such structures. The Academy is financed by tax money. The budget for the entire educational sector is negotiated and decided by the Parliament of the state of Saxony where Leipzig is located. The Ministry of Culture together with the Ministry of Finance allocates our annual budget which is then divided into several sub-budgets, some of them depending on our performance as an academy. Which means, as an institution, we are embedded in politics and that we are dependent on the parliament and its members. On the one hand, we have the privilege of a more or less secured budget and a number of paid jobs. But we get a concrete sense of this dependency whenever the ministries, for instance, develop new tools of evaluation which are connected with recalculating budgets and the quantity of paid jobs in our academy. The consequences of election results have become more of an issue during the past five years. We are, for instance, confronted with inquiries by the right-wing populist party which targets our class for artists who came to Germany as refugees. This is, of course, only the tip of the iceberg. Being a public institution has many far-reaching consequences and I would be very interested in discussing this further at a later point. But before diving too deep into this topic, we shift perspective and Clemens will talk about his approach to teaching. After a two-year interdisciplinary basic study period in media art, Students come into the class for about three years. Some also transfer to the class from outside. Each student brings along a different, often quite special skill. The point is to bring these individual abilities into the group, to specialize them individually, to have them discover new skills. So they have to develop their own methodology, but also even their own grammar, their own semiotics, their own world because their own work will be something new, something that has perhaps never existed before. So the unknown, the new, is the goal. From the individual we come to the group, because the fellow students are one of the most important factors for teaching at eye level in an art school, I think. The group, here it is called class, produces a network, a critical capacity, confronts the students with a different practice. They learn from it and at the same time they set themselves apart. Sometimes they form gangs, develop each other further. I am therefore a friend of the art class, which for about two years or three years produce, produces both security and openness. Of course, group dynamics play a big role, which can be influenced by pedagogical concepts and projects. In the class, uh, there are individual presentations and group discussions. Guests are invited, you meet other classes, go on excursions, you talk about theory seminars you are attending, plan projects or exhibitions together, disappear abroad and come back to get your diploma. There are crises, you change classes, try your luck elsewhere and do as many projects as possible, which eventually lead you out of the close relationship between your fellow students and the professor. Art education strives from the individual to the group to finally leave the institution. The goal is to leave the institution and not only seek the unknown, but to dare to produce it yourself. Therefore, the Art Academy must educate to become a memory itself. My class is called uh, Expanded Cinema and this subject also has been a direction in American art teaching in California. It was about leaving cinema, applying it to society. 
Buckminster Fuller is probably the one who is most quoted in the book Expanded Cinema by Jean Youngblood. From Fuller we know the idea that the world must be imagined from the outside, as a spaceship. Some of the concepts of expanded cinema, which can also be seen as reform concepts for academies of the 60s, 70s, can still be referred to today. Much of expanded cinema also had to do with digitalization, the question of a network, a total network. Jean Youngblood wrote, When we say expanded cinema, we actually mean expanded consciousness. the lines of content in my field of teaching will move more and more in the direction of artistic research with an updated look at digital innovations in film and narratives where we are mounting stories in digital spaces with data. I do hope that we will manage to provide the framework at our academy and create spaces for this development Clemens just outlined. What I personally really enjoy about working at an art academy is its proximity to the contemporary surrounding world. It sounds a bit like a cliche, but I actually experience this proximity as being much more present than, for instance, at the Philosophy Institute of the University where I worked as a postdoc before joining the academy. It might be important to mention, though, that the Leipzig Art Academy has a strong focus on so-called theory and therefore a rather large theory department. Luckily, this is also appreciated by the majority of our students and our seminars are very popular with an average of about 30 to 50 participants. One of my favorite events at HGB was a series of panel discussions we did on the issue of the relevance of art and the art of relevance. This serial event developed around discussions we had in several seminars I did at the time. One was on notions of critique, another one on representation and a third one on postcolonial theory. The team which conceived of the event consisted of five students and myself, which was not only fun, but also meant that the student's perspective, which Clemens mentioned earlier on, was the driving force behind this discourse. Each of the three panels, panel discussions drew an audience of about 200 people, which was way beyond our expectations. For each night, we invited three guests working in the art field, as artists, theoreticians, gallerists or editors. As a starting point, we took Adorno's observation that art is not a necessity, which we related to our observation that there seems to be an implicit agreement that only such art is considered relevant, which directly addresses political and social issues. Tom Hollert very appropriately called this the new relevance dogma, Relevanzdiktat in German. By questioning the relevance of art, we of course also questioned that of the Art Academy. The aim of such events was not to find conclusive answers to this question, but to create a temporary space for this discourse involving different diverse perspectives. We recorded and transcribed all the discussions and put those materials online where they are still frequently accessed and referred to. This embeddedness in current politics and the proximity to the contemporary world are two aspects which play a central role for my teaching and my understanding of its relevance. Last year I did a discussion-based seminar which I called Academy of Crisis, for which we took utopian models of the Art Academy as a point of departure. We related these historical concepts to our experience of the Academy and developed ideas for communication formats and methods which we felt are missing in our institution. And there's obviously a lot that there is missing in this field. Looking at Art Academy teaching from this point might also show its huge potential of questioning the relation of so-called theory and so-called practice. 
It's a rather simple observation, but in comparison to how academic teaching at universities is commonly understood in Germany, the spheres of practice and theory are considered far less separated in art academies, but rather as interrelated, interdependent and therefore connected fields. Also in our curatorial research program, we aim at developing a notion of research which comprises written discourse as well as spatial and aesthetic forms of expression and reflection. Performing another shift of perspective, Clemens will now return to our ancient institution. This institution is 256 years old and has undergone several major changes. This institution carries its traditions, its own museum, as a snail shell. In our case, these are four departments. Painting graphic art, painting and graphic art, and book art, graphic design. Photography was actually added around 1900, and media art in 1995. In Leipzig, of course, the fall of the Berlin Wall in 1989 at the German unification in 1990 was an important turning point, which was accompanied by the students at that time and led to massive changes at the academy a short time later, when many new colleagues from the West joined and many new experiments were made with media art, for example. So much has changed in 30 years. The changes today are sometimes met with skepticism or resignation. In 2009, the cultures of the Curatorial Studies program was introduced, where Benjamin teaches. Benjamin also said that instead of the bachelor master system, we still offer a diploma. About 500 students are enrolled with us. Every change here takes years, decades, and you first have to find out where you can make a lasting change. Because of the rigid framework, I think, students and teachers are heavily dependent on people. People develop their own teaching. They do not fill out a subject area, but develop the area itself and establish it. On the one hand, this encourages responsibility. On the other hand, this personalized teaching can produce psychological patterns. It reinforces them, gatekeeping, power games. Within the institution, it is therefore necessary to look at the human qualities in addition to the professional qualifications. When I say that the aim is to leave the institution and the institution wants to penetrate the student's memory, this is not intended as a negative image of the institution. Rather, it is precisely our school in a region that is also very conservative, for instance, with more openness and understanding for minorities, that can paint an image for the students that could be the avant-garde of their memory. For example, we have done a project with students called Cinema on the Move, which has organized site-specific film screenings in the region, in villages and small towns in Saxony in order to discuss with each other a reality check and artistic work that radiates from the university. For out there is sometimes an enmity against art and the heavy doors at the entrance of this institution and the thick walls are images in flux. Hard for the newcomers to get in, hard for some to get out. But for the art-haters, it is also a sign that we do not simply surrender. <laughs>